Hello, my name is Philip Kedge and I am the director of the Mackenzie Friend UK Network. I'm a retired police chief inspector and I've been a Mackenzie Friend since 2012. And in my blogs and my views and opinions are entirely my own. This blog today is part of my series on parental alienation and it's called Parental Alienation Why Kafkas Inspires Little Public Confidence in Managing It. Now to make this more manageable in bite-sized chunks, this is part one of two videos on this subject. It's important to say that I make this blog as a layperson who has for years been able to observe the family court, courts and the system as an outsider. I am the public, not the establishment, and I want to let people know exactly what is happening in the family courts because it lacks transparency. Secondly, I'm not banging a drum. I am not a victim of parental alienation and my observations are what I believe any reasonable person with my experience would also see and conclude. Please excuse me from reading from notes because this is a delicate and complex subject and I want to make sure that what I say, including my tone, is appropriate and correct. So let's start off with a quote from Kafkas. They say, For a long time now, those charged with looking after children's welfare have been aware of parental alienation and family court proceedings. However, growing interest and concern among the public, the courts, the social work sector, and other key stakeholders has brought it to the fore in recent years. Now I have a problem with that. If they have been aware of it for a long time, why have they not done anything about it? Why have they spent years ignoring it? Only now being forced to reconsider their position because of public opinion. I feel that this, from the outset, is a shocking indictment of Kafkas and the family courts. Let's move on to a second quote from Kafkas. They say, Our role is to establish the impact of alienating behaviours on the child concerned and to recommend to the courts what referrals, intervention or support is needed to end or lessen any harmful impact. Now, it's my personal view and observations that parental alienation in the family courts is, to varying degrees, endemic and rife. I see it all the time. However, from observing hundreds and hundreds of family court cases since 2012, I can literally count on one hand the number of times Kafkas have actually identified parental alienation and suggested interventions. I feel that there is a huge disconnect between what they say and the reality of what they are actually doing. Another quote from Kafka: They say, we recognise parental alienation as when a child's resistance or hostility towards one parent is not justified and is the result of psychological manipulation by the other parent. Alienating behaviours present themselves on a spectrum with varying impact on individual children. Now, I agree that parental alienation is on a spectrum, and the most important time to intervene is at the earliest stages when the seeds of alienation are being sown by the parent. However, I have never once seen Kafkas identify, manage or intervene in relation to parental alienation at its early stages on that spectrum. I have only seen Kafkas mention parental alienation as a possibility when it presents itself at the extreme end of the spectrum, at which point in pretty much every case that I have seen, they have determined that support is too late, 
and that it would be more harmful to force contact between the child with the alienated parent and instead conclude by recommending no direct contact on an indefinite basis. I see very little focus on the very clear early signs of parental alienation or on any early stage interventions. And I believe that this is a serious and negligent flaw in the system. Another quote from Kafka. While alienation may, can be demonstrated solely by one parent, it is often a combination of child and adult behaviours and attitudes with both parents playing a role. But surely here lies another problem. Kafka states in their operating framework that they don't take sides in parental conflicts. They see issues only from the eyes and narrative of the child, not the narrative of the parents about each other. Therefore, at the initial stages of the process, their default position is often to state that the child is being harmed by both parents engaging in acrimony. The problem I see is that by adopting that approach, they are potentially blinkered and closed-minded as to the possibility that one parent is alienating the other. Even if the signs of parental alienation are clearly evident, they appear to look the other way and default to a neutral position of both parents being engaged in acrimony and harming the child. By the time it takes to even begin to explore the narrative of the child, and this can take, this can be two to three months down the line, parental alienation could be taking hold, with the child being, being manipulated and further harmed. This means that Kafkas may be missing the early signs and failing to intervene or safeguard from the outset, which then allows the alienation to take critical hold at the crucial early stages. Well, I'm going to take a pause there and invite you to join me for part two, where I will be critically looking at how Kafkas and the courts seem to prioritise domestic abuse but neglect parental alienation and the critical flaw with the child impact assessment framework and then I'll be offering my conclusions on my observations. So if you're on the website at www.mckenziefrienduk.net you can look below and click on the button that states part two. I'm looking forward to you joining me again.